Hello, everybody. God bless you so much. God bless you and God bless you. We give God all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for such a wonderful time this afternoon. God bless you so much. Wherever you are, um, this is Lady Pastor Candy Menu coming your way this beautiful afternoon. God bless you so much. On this Saturday, God bless you. So we part out of praise. We part out of praise. It's your bread in our lives. So we part out of praise to you only. In our lives. So we part out of praise. We pour out a praise, it's your bread in our lungs. So we pour out a praise to you only. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. There is none like unto thee, our God. You are such an awesome God. You are a mighty God. The I am that I am God. The ancient of days and I don't like God. Father, we give you the praise, Holy Spirit. We give you all the worship and we give you all the honor. You deserve all the praise, Spirit of the living God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Great I you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty God. Great are you, Lord. Yes, your brain. God bless you so much for joining me this afternoon. God bless you so much. Today we're going to talk about before I say I do. We continue with the part three of before I say I do. The part three of before I say I do. God bless you so much. All of you that are watching me. I'd like you to hit your share button and share with your friends. Uh, let them know that I'm online right now. Today we're going to talk about something different. And I believe that it's going to be a blessing to all the singles out there. So all that are watching me, I wanted to... Invite somebody to join us right now. Invite somebody right now. Hit your share button and invite somebody. My precious, precious daughter, Lily, I'm blessed. God bless you so much. <laughs> the only Dickness in VFC. God bless you so much, Dickness. <laughs> God bless you so much. So I wanted to hit your share button uh, and then share with your friends. Let them know that I'm online right now. Um, God bless you so much. All of you, God bless you. 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 So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Amen. Don't go anywhere. Just stay put. Just stay put. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be awesome this afternoon. All right. Today I decided to stand a little bit. I wanted to stand so that I can be free, that I can talk. Amen. I wanted to be free this afternoon. That I can be able to talk, able to express myself very well. So, I decided to do some standing this afternoon. Wherever my husband is, I say hi. Uh, God bless you so much uh, for such invitation. Amen. For such invitation. Since Tuesday, I've been talking about, before I say I do, some of the things that as a single woman or as a single man, some of the things that you should put in place before you walk onto the altar. So on Tuesday, I've been sharing some few things. Um, and one of the things that I remember that I touched on is that I said specifically that marriage is not a competition. So as you are entering into a marriage, you should know that... <laughs> He said, express yourself, love you plenty. Thank you so much. You, now, now the tension is too much because now I know my husband is listening. I know my husband is watching now. So it's like, uh, <laughs> there's a tension in the atmosphere. <laughs> Amen. Lady Nora, God bless you too. Now I know there's a tension in the atmosphere So because I know my husband is watching me now. Hey, Pastor Che. Uh, Pastor Kwesi 
God bless you so much. Uh, Pastor Choi, God bless you so much. It's been a long time. Uh, say hi to the family for me and my love to your wife too. God bless you. So as I said, I know my husband is watching me now. So now the tension, let's have the tension in the atmosphere. He's going to mark me down. All right. So as I said on Tuesday, I, I said something like uh, marriage is not a competition. So when you are when you are a single person, one of the things that you should understand and know that uh, um, you are not competing with anybody. You are not in competition with anybody. And, and when it comes to marriage, it is not about who began first and, and who began last. The most important thing about marriage is that you are entering into the marriage and then you are enjoying the marriage for the rest of your life. And I also said something that it is better. It is much, much better to be about 35 or 40 and take your time and get married. That you're going to enjoy the marriage for the rest of your life. Than to marry, uh, you know, at an at a early age. And then you're going to be enduring. And then you're going to be suffering. And for all you know, you're going to be on medication for the rest of your life as a result of a wrong marriage. So marriage is not a competition. And, 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 and marriage is not a race. It's not about who began first and it's not about who ended you know so as a single person you got to take your time and take your time and take your time and know that you are not in competition with anybody you are not in competition with anybody as a single man or as a single woman all right god bless you so much uh mr bano mr bano god bless you say bano god bless you so much all right so i want to uh, i want to continue that before you say I do as a single person, you must understand and know that marriage is, is, is the class of two histories and two biographies. As a single person, single man, single woman, before you enter into your marriage, before you say I do, some of the things that you, you should know and understand that marriage is the clash of two histories. From different backgrounds. So you the white, you are coming from a, uh, uh, you the woman, you coming from a background. And the man is also coming from another background. So you the man, you have your own baggages. And the wife, and, and uh, sorry, and the woman has her own baggages. So maybe in your background in, as, as a man, there is no marriage there. People marry twice. You know, there's polygamy and, 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 and a whole lot of stuff in, 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 in your background. And the woman also has a whole lot of junk in her background. So you realize that both of you have junks from your background. So as a single man or as a single woman, before you say I do, it is proper that you engage in warfare. It is proper that you engage in prayer, that you spend most of your time in prayer, disconnecting yourself from your background disconnecting yourself from background from 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 that labor without results in your background from that beginning and not finish there are some families that when you rise rise you get the certain age you come down so as a single person that is the time for you to investigate to investigate into your background check your background what are some of the things in your background that fights marriages what are some of the things in your background that makes it impossible for a person to enjoy marriage. So you have to look into your background and begin to wage war. Begin to wage war and disconnect yourself. And enter into the mood of fasting and prayer. And disconnect yourself. Disconnect yourself from your background. Because as soon as you say I do, all the backgrounds come together. And one thing we have to understand is that the devil does not like marriage. The devil does not like marriage. So as you are preparing to go to the altar, there will be a whole lot of contention. There will be a whole lot of confusion. There will be a whole lot of things coming up in the realms of the spirit. There will be people fighting you physically. So you are not only encountering physical battles, you are also encountering spiritual battles. There are some of the single people that, as, as, as they are in a relationship and all that, you find people coming from different backgrounds. They are telling you, oh, this person is a bad person. Your fiance or your fiance is a wicked person. He has done this. He has done that. I know him. I know her. She, she, she has a child or she's been cheating or she's done that. So apart from the spiritual aspect, you also have contentions physically from people who do not like the marriage. 
So before you say I do, as a single person, it is not the time to be thinking about the wedding. It is not the time to be thinking about the shoes you're going to put on. It is not the time to be buying magazines. And you are looking at the bride. You are looking at the groom. And then you are thinking, what kind of shoe am I putting on? Or as a man, you are thinking, what am I going to wear? You know, what kind of shoe is invoked? What kind of shoe is invoked? All those things are not necessary. Amen. All those things are not necessary. So in preparing to say I do, it is the time for you to engage in prayer. You know, so if, if, if you're a single person and you are in a relationship and your fiance or your fiance does not like to pray, that is not a good relationship. If your fiance or your fiance does not like to pray, in the first place, you are in the wrong relationship. Because before you go to the altar, you have to make sure that spiritually you are loose. You are loose from all excesses. These are some of the things that my husband and I, we didn't know. So as I said the other time, some of the things we learned it the hard way. And that is why we are able to teach. And as we are teaching, we teach about it passionately. Why? Because we made some mistakes. Before we walked to the altar, we didn't we never had the chance to pray. We didn't pray concerning our background, but there were a lot of witches in my background. There were a lot of witches in his background. So before we came together, even at the day of the engagement, there was a confusion. So even before we, before we agreed to get married, all the forces from my background and all the forces of his background, they came together and they began to fight the relationship. They began to fight the relationship. We didn't know all that. We just went and then we said, I do. And we entered into our relationship. We entered into our marriage with a whole lot of baggages. I came with my baggage and he came with his baggage and we all came together. So you realize that in the midst of our marriage, we had a whole lot of encounter. It, it was a lot of warfare. It was a lot of warfare. It was a lot of contention in prayer and fasting and all that. Why? Because we did not know it. We did not know it. So as my husband and I are teaching, as I'm teaching, you have to be very, very attentive as a single person and see that as an opportunity. It is not that we don't have anything to do that we come on Facebook Live and we talk, 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 talk. No. I'm a very, very busy mother. As a matter of fact, my 24 hours is not even enough. It's not enough. So as a single person, it is the time for you to grab and grab it's not that you are just watching me. I want you to listen and make notes. Because my husband and I, we made deadly mistakes. And that is why we are teaching. And we don't want you, the singles, to make the same mistakes that we made. That is why we are teaching. So that as a single person, you can avoid some of the things that we were not able to avoid. So when you are single, is the clash of two histories. You can't tell me that in your background there's nothing there. There is something in your background. It could be that, you know, there's no marriage in your background. Or they will allow you to have children, but you can't settle down. That is something in your background. Or you can, as a lady, you can look through your background and realize that none of the women are stable. None of them are married. That is a problem. Or as a man, you look into your background and realize that all the men, you know, abuse women. All the men abuse women. If, don't, if, if, if they don't abuse women, they sleep around, they cheat. So that is something also in your background. So before you walk to the altar, you want to make sure that you are loose. You are loose from all the baggages, from all the lies, from all the soul ties, from all the unnecessary trash that is in your background by contending in prayer. Amen? Most single people don't like to pray. They are just lazy, 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 lazy. All the noise to go shopping and go there and go there. And they are looking and, and they are, you know, they are just in the mall. And, and, and they are just walking about. And, and they are just walking about and walking about. Hey, my prophet, I salute you. I salute you. I salute you, prophet Jimmy. I salute you. God bless you. All the noise just walk about and walk about and walk about. But you have a whole lot of baggages. So as a single person, you got to spend time in prayer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes when we are saying this, and, oh, Dr. Love and Lady Pastor Kenny, they are just talking. They don't know what they are saying. You know, they are just talking. It is not about the talking. It is the fact that if you are single, let prayer and fasting be your food and lose yourself. <laughs> lose yourself from the baggages. 
or else when you walk to the altar and bubble and, 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 and marriage and marriage is a covenant marriage is a covenant so as you're walking to the altar you are making a covenant from what is in the background of the guy and what is the background of you, the woman, you are making a covenant. So you are making a spiritual covenant. So all the witches have come together from your side and from his side and they've also made a covenant. And what is their intention? They have just one purpose and just one intention. And the intention is, how can we destroy this marriage? I mean, what can we do to make sure that these people do not enjoy their marriage? What can we do to make sure that these people repeat the same cycles in their family? What can we do to make sure that these people never enjoy peace in this marriage that they've entered into? And that is their purpose. What can we do to make sure that as they've come together, their finances is not going to be okay? There are some people who are single. They have good jobs. Everything is going on well. As soon as they say, I do, their job crashes. Everything about them crashes. Why? Because you are, you are talking about two backgrounds. So even if your background is loose, I mean, you got to handle the background of the other person. If your background is okay, you got to handle the background of the other person. So don't feel that, oh, as of my background, all my, all my enemies, all, I mean, there are no witches in my family. And apart from that, in my family, we have good marriages. In my family, everybody has money. In my family, there is nothing wrong. It is okay. What about the other person coming into your life? How is their background? Do you know their background? Do you know the battles they are fighting? Do you know what is in their background that fight against them? You have no idea. So as a single person, you do not want to only concentrate on your side. You've got to concentrate on the person that you are getting married. You also got to concentrate on that person also side. Because if you only focus on your side, when you enter into the marriage, the person's background is also going to attack you. So it is not the time to be looking around in, as I said, Shoes and men, you're looking for what kind of suit is invoked and all. That is not the time. You, it is the time for Mazigle Ratuka Adini Maru Zalaba Kutoria Ale Maduri Karaturiaba Shali Matoria Kaba Araza Dele Madele Maruko Tolebara Idigle Shali Maturia I lose myself Madola Broca Zili Bakotolia Kadaba Lord deliver me from my background Elay Makuta Bra Shalebaka Aduli Baratoria Adani Matoria Alei Mekotoria May my background never fight me I break every sword tie. I break every bondage. Hey, Makutora. Hey, Makuta. Every forces that fight marriage in my background. Break. Amen. So it's not the time to be gentle. And hey, that's for me. I'm the lady. I don't like to pray. If you don't like to pray, I said on Tuesday, marriage is not for you if you do not like to pray. So as a single person, that is what you got to be doing. Lay aside the lady. When you're in your closet, don't be a lady. When you go to church and it's time for prayer, don't be a lady. And you got to make sure that any time that you are praying, you are praying concerning your background. I disconnect myself. I disconnect myself. And you are disconnecting yourself. And you are praying and you are losing and you are disconnecting yourself. So that you make sure that you are entering and you are saying, I do empty amen look at that prophetess of Oku, she said my husband and i did 72 days of fasting before wedding what a blessing i did not know that my husband didn't know that what a blessing so you can never invest in prayer before your wedding and be disgraced at least you would have fought about 70% of those battles. Because there are forces that fight marriages. And there are forces that fight before marriage. So before marriage, there are forces. And after the marriage, there are forces. So if you don't deal with the before, when you get married, so it's like before and after, they all come together. And it's too much packages. Amen. Yes, Lord. 
So as a single person, it is the time for prayer. It is the time for disconnection. It is the time to also look into your life as a single person and ask yourself, what are some of the things in my life that when I walk to the altar with all these characters, with all this attitude, is going to affect my marriage? So as a man, maybe you have anger issues, okay? You have anger problem. Or as a woman, you also have your own issues. So during the time of the, of the courtship, it is the time to assess yourself. It is the time for accessibility. Look into your life and ask yourself, what is it about me that can destroy my marriage? Amen? What is it about me? And you cannot say that as a single person, you don't have any baggages. It's a lie. It is a lie. Everybody has issues in his or her life that needs to be addressed. So if you know that you're a man and you like lies, you like to cheat, you got to pray and disconnect yourself and ask God to deliver you from the spirit of cheating or else when you enter into the marriage, you're going to be committing adultery from one after the other, one woman to another woman, one woman to another woman. From there and there, you'll be moving. So you got to assess yourself and look into your life and ask questions. How many singles are able to sit down and have a period of thinking? A period of thinking on their own and begin to assess. I mean, they are just assessing. They are looking into their lives. What is it about me that would destroy my marriage as I'm about to get married? What is it about, my, about me? Is it my mouth? Is it my attitude? Is it that I don't respect? Is it that, you know, whatever. Just look into your life and then you assess it. And then when you are, when you are done assessing yourself and then you begin to wage war. Amen. Because everything has a name and has a spirit that is behind it. So anger has a spirit. That attitude has a spirit. Whatever that makes you do what you do has a spirit. So it is a time for you to go into your closet and confront that spirit that causes you to do what you do. So it's not just a mouth talk. Amen. Glory to God. It's not just a mouth talk. Oh, when I might, I will not do that. I'm not going to cheat on my spouse. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to be a submissive wife. I'm going to be a good wife. I'm going to be like this. My marriage, it's not the talk. Because the talking does not bring solution. It is the basilica and the Gaza. It is the prayer that brings the solution. The talking does not do anything. There are some men that are married, they say, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to cheat on my wife. They end up cheating. And there's a woman that said, I'm not going to be sleeping around, I'm not going to do this, but they are still doing it. So it is not the talking, it's about confronting the spirit that is behind that thing that makes you do what you do. <laughs> so when a man cheats, or you have a fiance or whatever. You know, he lies and whatever. You should know that there's a spirit that causes him to do that. So you're talking, talking, talking will not solve the issue. It is your prayer and addressing it and addressing it and binding and destroying that spirit. It is what will cause that person to be free. Just the mere talk will not solve it. So it, it, it is good to have, you know, Whatever that you want to have in your future. I want a man like this. I want a woman who is like that. It is good to have all that. But if you don't engage in prayer, those things will be just mere words. It will not come to pass. So even Paul told Timothy, he said, concerning these things, wage warfare. So he, he told Timothy, he said, it is true. You have received a prophetic word. It is true that this is what I've been said about you. But concerning these things, you got to wage war. So concerning the things that God has spoken concerning your life as a single person, concerning the things that you want in your life as a single person, you got to wage war or else it won't happen. Or else the change will not come. Amen? The change will not come. You will not see it. So 
So as a single person, you are blessed more than blessed and you are privileged. Don't see yourself as a mistake. I'm telling you the truth. Most of the people that are buried, they wish. Including myself. Sometimes I wish I knew all these things. I wish I knew it. I say, God, I wish I knew this. So as a single person, you got to take it serious and begin to pray. Pray more than all the chatting. And then you're on the phone. Oh, hello. I miss you. And I'm thinking about you. I cannot sleep. And, oh, you don't know. Oh, you know what's going on today. I had a dream about a word and I had a dream. And it was so powerful. And it was so. And I had a dream. And I had a dream. Oh, I miss you. All those things are unnecessary. So you got to spend more time in prayer than be on the phone. And I miss you. And I miss you. And I love you. And spend more time in prayer. Let the conversation be less. Because when you get it spiritually, it's going to affect the physical aspect. When you are able to get it spiritually, it is easy to assess the physical. So this person that you are talking to and is so nice and your fiance is so sweet and is so sweet and is so loving and it's all like that. Just one word from the enemy can change his mind. So it's not about spending time and talking, talking. It's about telling your fiance or fiance, let's pray. Let's fast. Let's pray. Let's fast. Let's pray. Let's fast. Let's pray. Let's fast. Let's pray. Let's Amen. Let's fast and pray. Let's pray for ourselves. Amen. All right. Uh, let's go to the book of um, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2 and 3. The book of Ephesians. Glory to God. My sweet, sweet, sweet daughter, Vanel. God bless you so much. You owe me a visit. You know it. May the Lord open that door. Amen. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 2 and 3. And the Bible said. With all lowliness and meekness. With long suffering. Forbearing one another in love. Please note. Please note. With all lowliness. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. So, as a single person, before you enter into the marriage, the Bible is saying that with all lowliness and meekness, you got to understand that as you are entering into the marriage, it is not going to be. Ah. It is not all going to be like that. There are going to be battles. There are going to be time. There's no money. There will be a time. There will be constant conflict. There will be a time you like, I don't know you. There will be a time you like, I don't want you in my life. There will be a time you say, I regret marrying you. So as a single person, before you say, I do, you got to understand and know that. All these things are going to take place when you say, I do. There will be confusion. There will be conflicts. There will be a time there's no money. There will be misunderstanding. There will be poverty. There will be all these things, sickness, and so many things will pop up. There will be a time that you are like, get out of my life. There will be a time like you are the worst person that ever, I, I, I've ever seen in my life. 
So you, you, you need to understand and have that thing at the back of your mind. That as long as you are walking onto the altar to have a covenant whosoever that you are married to, all these things are going to pop out. But the Bible says that. And you have to know that with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing each other, forbearing each other. So even when your spouse step on your toes, you should know that forbearing each other and you are moving forward. So as a single person, you need all the love in this world. That is the agape love. The unconditional love of God. Because if you don't have it, you can't marry. Amen? If you don't have the agape love, the grace to be meek, the grace to be low, the grace to be understanding, you cannot get married. Because marriage is full of battles. Marriage is full of battles. So you need the unconditional love, the agape love. So when you are filled with the agape love of God inside of you, that is when your spouse can offend you and you will still love him. That is when your spouse can do something to you and you keep on moving. Amen. So you need to ask God to baptize you with the unconditional love. So if you are the person that you, you are very picky, everything gets on your nerve. It means that you have to take your time and make sure that you are ready on that area before you enter into the marriage. Amen? Because your spouse will get on your nerves. So if you don't have the, that unconditional, the agape that says that I forgive you, the agape love that says that I let go. The agape love that says that you have done this to me, but I still love you. Because you have couples that are living like enemies. They are living like a cat and a mouse. They can't stand each other. Why? Because they don't have the, the, the fullness of the love of God inside of them. So as a single person, marriage is not a competition. Don't let it get into your head. That you are competing with somebody. Let it get into your head that I'm preparing myself physically and spiritually. And making sure that I am ready. Amen. And making sure that I am ready and I am prepared before I walk to the altar to say I do to the man or the woman. With all lowliness. And meekness with long suffering. So the long suffering is the fruit of the spirit that is necessary before you enter into the marriage. For how long can you bear something? There are some people who say, as for me, I cannot take it. I don't take nonsense. If you do something to me and I don't want it, I walk away. Where is your long suffering? I used to be that kind of person that if you do something, I have to correct you. I have to say something. I can't just keep quiet and walk away. I cannot do it. But God had to put me in a, in a position and I learned it the hard way. So as a single person, before you say I do, you need the grace of long suffering. Long suffering. Long suffering. Long suffering. Long suffering. You say that what? He said, open your eyes. <laughs> Marriage is not joking. It has many difficult moments. Not everyone. Yes. So you need the long suffering. So where there are challenges and all that, if you don't have the long suffering, that is when you back out. And I'm tired of this. Even if you are just in a mere relationship, you are complaining. It is not even marriage. Amen. It is not marriage. Just a relationship. You don't even have tolerance. <laughs> As a single person, you are not married. You are just in a relationship. You don't have tolerance. You don't have long suffering. You don't have it. 
just a relationship that you can even choose to walk away. You know, you can walk away if you want to walk away without anybody stopping you. And even that, you don't have long suffering. You don't have tolerance. You don't have patience. You don't have all these virtues. So if you're a single person, you don't have all these virtues. How can you survive in marriage? But this time you are staying with the same person under the same roof. You are seeing the person every day of your life. Every day. You go to the kitchen, the person is there. You go to the bathroom, the person is there. You enter the room, the person is there. You go this way, the person is there. You pass this way, the person is there. You are seeing the person consistently. Consistently. So if you don't have all that tolerance, if you don't have all the tolerance, the long suffering, marriage is not for you. Because you don't want to enter into the marriage and now you, 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 you are going to bother somebody's child as a result of your negligence. So you need all the long suffering in the world, all the patience, all the tolerance, all the meekness. So if you are that kind that you say, I can, I mean, you can't tell me and that, 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 so I'm out. The little thing you check out of the relationship, a little confusion you check out of the relationship. Something happens to check out. Everything you check out. Little thing I'm checking out. Everything I'm checking out. Marriage is not for you. Because marriage is no joke. And as I said, there are some battles that you never encounter. Until you say I do, that is when you begin to encounter those battles. But in a just mere relationship, some of the battles you will not see it. But as, as soon as you come together as one, that is when you begin to see all those battles. So if you are used to checking out all the time, checking out of relationship, it means that when you enter into the marriage, you can't survive for a long time. That is why there are some people, they get married at least two weeks and they are tired. One month, they are tired. Three months, they are tired already. They are complaining. And hey, what is this marriage about? What is this marriage about? And I'm tired of this marriage. And I'm tired of this marriage. What were you thinking? That is why as a single person, you got to prepare your mind. Amen? Prepare your mind and prepare your heart. And know that marriage is not a joke. And that you're going to encounter some challenges. And ask yourself, how am I going to handle all these challenges? And am I ready? So as a single person, you don't ask yourself all these questions. What am I going to do with this thing when I enter the, into the marriage? What am I going to do? You don't ask yourself all these questions. All you are thinking is the altar, the wedding, the people that are coming, your gown, your hair, your all. All this just 1%. So most of the singles are preparing for wedding. They are not preparing for marriage. How many books have you read? You know you, 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 you don't have the spirit of long suffering. Have you read about long suffering? Have you read about how you're going to be patient? Have you read about the grace to forgive? Have you searched the scriptures on, on the spirit of forgiveness? Have you done that? So you have a hard time to forgive. Marriage is not for you. Everything gets on your nerves. You are not ready. So it is not only the physical readiness. It's the spiritual readiness that is very, very important. And that is what is crucial. So you know that you don't have the grace of long suffering. As the Bible was saying, with all long suffering and meekness, you don't have patience. Make sure that you have been delivered. You have been delivered. The grace to be able to forgive. Forgive. Because if you don't have forgiveness, you cannot enter into marriage. So marriage, it is not how people are saying it. It is very, very good. Marriage is very, very, very good because that is the first institution that God gave to us out there. Marriage is very good. But people get frustrated because they enter into the marriage unprepared. They enter into the marriage unprepared. So as a single person, I say all the time, you are blessed. Don't look down upon yourself. Don't talk down upon yourself. Well, don't see the married couples and get threatened. You see people who are married and you're like, Oh God, oh God, when Lord, when Lord. Don't be threatened. 
See it as a privilege and prepare yourself physically and spiritually. You are preparing. You are preparing. You are preparing. Putting your character in place. Putting your attitude in place. Asking God to give you the grace to forgive. The grace to be tolerant. Because you need all that tolerance. Where you are coming from another background. He's also coming from another background. Everybody being raised differently. So if you are saying, I'm, oh, I'm waiting for the super perfect woman. I'm waiting for the super perfect man. It does not exist. You prepare yourself and enter. And when you prepare yourself and you enter, you can be able to confront a whole lot of things. With all long suffering. How long can you go when it comes to patience? How far can you go? How far can you go? When it comes to tolerance, how far can you go when it comes to patience? Everything gets on your nerves. Everything makes you mad. Everything makes you angry. The little thing I'm checking out. The little thing I'm checking out. I can't take this. I'm not the girl that takes that. I'm not the man. I don't take those things. You are not ready. Amen. You are not ready. So I said on Tuesday, marriage is not a competition. So if you know you are not ready, just make sure you are ready. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, make sure that you are ready. So it means that some of the singles are not getting anybody into their lives. Or some of the singles are not married because God knows that you are not ready. God knows that there is something in your life that you have not dealt with. Sometimes we feel we know ourselves so much, but God knows us better than we know ourselves. So for all you know, God knows there's something about you that you got to deal with. Or else if you don't deal with it, you enter into the marriage and you'll be crying for the rest of your life. So as a single person, this is the last thing I'm saying, I'll be out of here. So as a single person, just look into your life. What is it about me that if I'm not careful, it can destroy my marriage? What is it about me that if I'm not careful, I cannot stay married? Because you, you, you don't want to get married for, for weeks and then check out. You don't want to get married for months and then you check out. You want to get married for the rest of your life. And to enjoy your marriage for the rest of your life. So don't see marriage as a competition. Don't see marriage as a race. Don't, don't, don't look at marriage in that area. Look at marriage as something that God has ordained. And look at marriage as something that I have to be ready. Being ready. Being ready. Being ready. In every area. Being ready. Amen. God bless you so much. I believe that you've been blessed. I have some few points I wanted to share, but I have to run right now. So I'll just end here and then um, I'll be back in the evening. I'll be back in the evening at 6 Eastern time. I'm not going to be long in the evening. I'll be back at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And then I'll give you just about three points and I hope to finish it. But I think there are some more that I believe that if you're single, it can be a blessing to you. Amen. All right. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. So I would like you to hit your share button and then share with your friends. Go ahead and hit the share button and then share with your friends. Go ahead and share with your friends. Go ahead and share with them. Go ahead and share with your friends. Amen. Go ahead and share. So we'll be back at 6, 6 Eastern time. Amen. God bless you so much. So that is the book I've been teaching from. Uh, the book my husband wrote. Before I say I do, every single person that is watching me, you need a copy of this book. You really need a copy of this book. Before I say I do, you need a copy. There are so many things inside that you can learn from it. Amen. 
So as a single person, you need this book. Before I say I do, if you need a copy, just hit, I need a copy. And then wherever you are, I'll make sure I'll let you have it. So please, make sure you get a copy of this book. Before I say I do, every single person, you need this book. You need it. And then we have um, Leadership 101. Leadership 101. That's a leadership book. If you are married, whatever, your, your leadership, you need this book. Leadership one on one, make sure you get your copy. Um, and then we have reasons why people fail. What are some of the reasons why people are failing? When you get a copy of this book, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot. Some are habits and all that, bad habits. So you want to get the copy and then learn something also. We have self-investment, investing in yourself. It says that you are the greatest investment. When you increase value, your demand will also increase. That is powerful. Make sure you get a copy. Self-investment. You got to invest in yourself. So that your increase and your demand will also increase. Amen. All right. Uh, and then we have marital conflict. We have marital conflict. Marital conflict. You need a copy of this book. If you are single, you are married. You need a copy of this book. Conflict in marriage. Every, every marriage goes through conflict, whether we like it or not. Amen. So, try and get a copy of this book. Uh, we have, why men cheat? Why do men cheat? Somebody was asking, do a man need a reason to cheat? There's a reason why they are cheating. It could be background. It could be the fact that your lady, your, your lips are too much. It could be that you're not giving him peace or something. Amen. Why men cheat? Why men cheat? So, make sure you grab your copy. Why men cheat? Make sure you get a copy of this book also. And then we have strategies of wealth creation. It says how to make, multiply, and invest money. You need a copy of this book also. Strategies of wealth creation. How to make money. It is not all the time that we spend money in our mouth and all that. We got to invest for the future. And for the, uh, and, and for the future of our children. So we have all the set of the book here is nine. It's nine. If you need a combo, let me let you know. I'll, I'll give you a good price for it. So each of them is $15. $15 per book. Amen. But all the singles, get this book. Get this book. You need the information. Amen. You don't enter marriage with love. You enter into marriage with preparation and information. So as a single person, you got to enter into the marriage well prepared and well informed. So that you don't make a costly mistake in your marriage. All right. You're the answer to it all. You wipe away your tears. You mend the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. To it all. Jesus, miracle worker, promise keep on light of the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep on light of the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I love this song so much. He's a way maker. If you are watching me and you know that you know you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't have him in, in your life. He's not the Lord over your life. It is time for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. Let it come into your heart. Let him come and change you. He's the only person that can change you. Amen. He's the only person that can change you. And now we are in the end times and we are the evil days. We need Jesus. If you already said this after me, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you this day. I ask you to forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me with your blood. Make me whole with your blood. Satan, I denounce you. I do not belong to you. I belong to Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into my life and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you know you said this after me, find a good church and plug in there and find something and do in the house of God. All right. God bless you so much. So I want you to go ahead and hit the share button and share with your friends right now. Please go ahead and share the link.
Amen. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and share the link. Amen. I'll be back at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss it. I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire in my soul. I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In my soul, and I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. In my soul, and I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. God bless you so much. See you at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Love you all. Love you guys. God bless.